Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Stacy Stanislaw, and I'm the Communications Manager for the Drexel Libraries. I just wanted to take a minute to thank you for joining us for this afternoon's webinar, Engineering Information Awareness, Learn to Use Library Research Tools and Techniques Effectively. We're really excited to co-host this session with our friends at Elsevier as part of the 2021 Engineers Week. Engineers Week was created by the National Society of Professional Engineers in 1951, and it is a week-long event dedicated to increasing understanding of and interest in engineering and technology careers. Now, I just want to take a minute to introduce today's presenters, Jay Bott and Keith Hayes. I'm sure many of you know Jay. He is the engineering librarian at Drexel University. Jay is responsible for building library collections and engineering subject areas, and he teaches information and research skills to engineering faculty and students. He's actively involved with the Engineering Libraries Division of the American Society for Engineering Education, as well as sev several engineering related chapters of the Special Libraries Associ Association. He experiments with innovative applications of emerging technologies to enhance information literacy among faculty and students, and he's passionate about raising awareness of open access, open data, and other open educational resources. Now, also please take a minute to join me in welcoming our second presenter, Keith from the academic publishing company Elsevier. As a customer success consultant, Keith helps STEM researchers and educators use Elsevier's engineering software portfolio, which includes products like Novel, Engineering Village, and GeoFacets, to find answers to the world's most challenging problems, as well as to educate the next generation of engineering students. He is also a new father and loves spending time with his family and traveling for both work and family vacations. Thank you both so much for joining us today, as well as to our audience. And now I'll turn it over to Jay and to Keith. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Stacy. Um, so my topic, engineering information awareness, learn to use library research tools and techniques effectively. And this is my, uh, one of my favorite and passionate topic in terms of teaching information skills to our engineering students, faculty members, and many other uh, students, students, students and students. Why this is important? Because the engineering and information landscape is complex, heterogeneous, which dem demands specialized tools. Whether you are searching for the latest journal or conference articles, authoritative handbooks, material property data, patents, or standards, you will find many of these tools and authoritative information resources you will need through the Drexel University Libraries. And during the course of your project, whether you're working on a senior design project, or a freshman design project, or even for class projects, um, these are the tools that are going to come uh, very handy to you. And these are uh, subscription-based tools uh, which you need uh, to access to our Drexel University Library. So I'm going to point out what these tools are and how you're going to use them to, uh, to enlighten and uh, enrich your engineering knowledge. Um, so what are we going to cover today? Learn how to navigate STEM-related research available through Drexel libraries. Uh, we'll start with Dragon Search and explore some sources. Dragon Search is our discovery platform where you can be able to search across journal articles, conference papers, electronic books, and many other things. Uh, we'll then go to novel engineering database to find information on your research topic, search for background information, material property data, chemical data, and so on, things like that. And then we'll ultimately go to engineer elsewhere's engineering village uh, to find the latest trends in your research areas. And there are certain tips and advanced features that are available in engineering village that you will uh, need to uh, learn how to use them. And Kate is also going to highlight some additional uh, information about novel and elsewhere's engineering village. Uh, so uh, in engineering information design, um, uh, whether it is for freshman design or senior design, or you're just working on some kind of a product design development, you're trying to define your problem, you're trying to understand the information needs and gather information that would help you solve that problem. Why is this problem important to solve? You will be doing a lot of brainstorming to do rapid fire idea generation. Uh, find information, evaluate, use relevant in solving the problem or for your projects, and then based upon this collection information you uh, uh, found, uh, you will be uh, uh, then using some of it or uh, not using it, but to identify some additional information to design and develop a solution. Uh, you will test the prototype and repeat until you're happy with your product. So, so, so a lot of um, uh, iterative solutions happen uh, 
uh, to figure out solution to your design problem. And same thing with your engineering research. If you're working on a research papers, you're also looking for latest development in the field. Uh, for understanding subjects, um, you're going to need uh, background information for better understanding of the subject. It could be interdisciplinary in nature, and a lot of times I have seen that we have uh, uh, students from different disciplines are working together on a project. Um, uh, they could be from other uh, areas. Uh, a biomedical engineering student could be working for with an electrical engineering student, or even physics and chemistry and other those disciplines. So it's very important for you to understand uh, where to find this interdisciplinary information and how you can use it. A uh, variety of online sources are available through our library guides, which include handbooks and electronic books and encyclopedias and journal articles, and we are going to cover, cover uh, in the next few slides. Finding background information. Develop insights into your project, understanding about your research needs. Uh, research and find information using uh, the resources that I mentioned using handbooks and encyclopedia and so on. And we're going to use novel as an example to find that information. Develop strong foundations in understanding peer reviewed scholarly literature using Engineering Village. And of course, we are also going to highlight a couple of other uh, resources that will also help you uh, to find background information. And we start with our Drexel uh, University's library guide, which is uh, www.library.drexel.edu. And there's a link on the top, so you can also uh, go directly from there. Uh, and you can see that there's a research support section there. Uh, that's where you'll see the link to various subject experts and the library guides and uh, tutorials uh, on different things that you can do. Uh, there are quick links available here, and plus the latest information uh, update about the libraries. And this is where this white search bar you see here is the Dragon Search, which is our discovery uh, platform. Search, Dragon Search for ebooks, journal articles, and more. So we will start with this. I will just use a couple of examples, and then we'll go to uh, a novel. And uh, I use Advanced Search within that Dragon Search, uh, and you can click on that link here. And I wanted to find, uh, see what kind of uh, definition of nan nanotube. Uh, I want to learn about, uh, just define the term nanotube, or carbon nanotube, for example. Uh, so how do we search it, right? Uh, a dictionary, an online dictionary that we have access to. So then I, I just type this, uh, well, something that I'm looking for, dictionary, in uh, engineering subject area, and for a keyword, nanotube. Right, so, we, uh, so I just identified those terms and did a search, and that pulls up several dictionaries, but I'm choosing one of these called Nano and Microtechnology from A to Z, from Nano Systems to Colloids and Interfaces. And uh, it takes you to the page where you can click on to access to find the whole uh, dictionary and that particular term, and you will see that the nanotube term is nicely defined here with some additional references. And I strongly encourage that you also browse through other terms uh, that you might be also interested to learn about, like for example, nano whisker or nano wire, uh, so you'll uh, uh, understand terminologies within the nanotechnology field. Next, we go to explore encyclopedias. Uh, we started with definition, but we want to go beyond and understand more uh, subject-based information to learn about concepts. And to do this, we have to go through different encyclopedias that we have access to. Uh, these are some screenshots, uh, some pictures of uh, encyclopedias that you see at the bottom of the, this slide. And uh, encyclopedias usually have historical overview. They also have statistical information, images, illustrations, conceptual understanding. And now these days, because of the all the encyclopedias are online, uh, different concepts that are also linked within that main concept. So just clicking on one link takes you to another relevant link. And this is how you're going to build up knowledge for the subject that you are interested in. Um, and to access this encyclopedias, and including novel and engineering village, you will start with a library guide for engineering. 
and here is a link and within that you will see a section for electronic reference and within that you will see a link to access science and this is one encyclopedia that I also would like to introduce because for our undergraduate students and even for uh, anyone who is interested in learning about more uh, uh, subject based knowledge um, in different disciplines you will find it very very useful. It has biographies of scientific figures, images, videos, and many other subjects. So just click on Access Science and Electronic Reference link from this library guide will take you uh, to this um, resource. And of course, you will have to log in using Drexel 1 uh, credentials because it is uh, 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 available to only current Drexel students, faculty and Drexel community, Drexel staff. Um, so uh, then once you are in the system, you will be able to see different articles, briefings, news, biographies, medias, and so on. And you will, uh, you can also create your account, uh, and you will see there's a search box where you can search your term, or you can explore by browsing different subject areas. So you can see there's a whole section about engineering and materials, environmental science, chemistry, uh, botany, mathematics, health sciences, uh, physics, paleontology. So you see a lot of different subject areas covered within that. Uh, and you can also browse articles in alphabetical order. Um, I um, went to engineering materials section and within that I'm also seeing that there's a whole section about aerospace engineering. So if I'm learning about um, aerospace medicine, for example, or astronautics, I can go further down and explore those subjects. Or I can simply type a keyword in the search box, and since we are looking for carbon nanotubes, I want to find out what kind of additional information that can learn about carbon nanotubes. And it's a very interdisciplinary field, so I'm sure that uh, many uh, subject-based experts will be interested in learning about more about these other subject areas. Um, so uh, when I use carbon nanotube here, um, I can see that there are about 68 results when I did search last time. And I can all limit to articles or image or biography or all topics, but I wanted to learn all about different articles. So I can select carbon nanotubes um, and you'll get more details. So now we go to the main topic of our today's conversation and that is about using novel um, and how we, within novel you can be able to discover encyclopedias and handbooks and other electronic books. Same thing, you go to engineering uh, uh, library guide and under electronic books section, uh, there's a section called electronic books. Notice that I'm using electronic books and elect not electronic reference. It could be either way, but uh, because electronic, this is collections of books from different publishers, I wanted to put them in electronic books section. And underneath, you will see a link to novel, uh, which is an engineering reference database with ebooks, interactive graphs, tables, materials, and substance, property data, and equations, and more. So you click on novel, and that will uh, take you to the main search page for novel. And strongly encourage you to uh, browse a collection under novel. If you click on home, uh, you will also be able to see different subject areas within novel that we have subscription to. It's mainly a database to find engineering data, technical reference to solve engineering problems. There's a whole section about property search. And this is very important. We'll come back to that when I talk about how to search material properties. Um, and within that, you will see property search section, your my novel section. And I know Keith is also going to go over some of this. Um, and my novel is very important because that is where you can create an account uh, and you can save some of your book chapters that you have discovered. Interactive equations, unit converter, browsing novel, and many more tools are available through that. And I'm searching for carbon nanotubes. And as I type, you will see that the keywords are also popping up to give you some additional a search. Uh, so carbon nanotube films, uh, carbon nanotubes, and carbon nanotube polymer composites, carbon nanotube science synthesis properties and applications, a couple of examples of sources that you have found. And 
Um, I can also search for encyclopedia, for example. I'm only interested in searching about uh, something that comes in encyclopedia. So that I search for carbon nanotubes, encyclopedia is my keyword. And then it pulls up uh, several, several of them, but one of them I want to highlight in particular here is the Encyclopedia of Material Science and Technology, volume one to 11. So 11 volume set of this particular encyclopedia is completely online. And we have access to it through um, a novel collection. Uh, so I can simply click on this link for carbon nanotubes, and that gives you a, uh, this is simply a, scre a screenshot, just portion of screenshot on from that uh, chapter on carbon nanotubes from encyclopedia of materials. And some history and how it got started uh, with discovery of fullerenes and so on. And you can also see that there are references included. So if you want to go and learn more about history, you can refer to those references as well. And I can also select uh, uh, and click on the full book. Uh, for, uh, so you can actually see the encyclopedia material science and technology volumes one to 11. And you can uh, uh, explore some a full book chapters, and you will see here on the. Um, uh, actually, I want to do sorry. I want to show you. No, here. No, where is it? I went ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I basically wanted to show you that the full book chapter links are here, so you can click on that link here. So next thing I wanted to explore is handbooks. A lot of times you're looking for property data, um, uh, especially these are very useful when you're doing some hands-on uh, things for your design project. Uh, how you want to learn more about how something works, for example. Uh, so it has a lot of tables and figures and diagrams, and these are some examples of handbooks that you see at the bottom of the page. Um, and uh, uh, from an SAE handbook, this is a picture that came uh, that you can see uh, pick uh, diagrams like that. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm interested in learning about power electronics, for example. And I want to know if there's a handbook on power electronics within novel. So I just type handbook and power electronics as my keyword. And uh, then it comes up uh, with a couple of several examples. But here, I'm just highlighting two things here. Uh, from this screenshot, Power Electronics Design Handbook. Um, and there is Power Electronics Handbook for the edition from 2018. So this is a little new book here. And it also tells you, you can, that you can also define by a subject. So if you are learning more about AC machines or you want to learn more about grid connected or things like that, you can uh, use those keywords and refine them. Um, and you can also say if you create your account within novel, as I mentioned to you earlier, within my novel, you can also save this search uh, uh, query. And I also want to point out here that there is a support center link on the top. And this support center has excellent video tutorials available on how to use advanced features within novel. So I strongly encourage you to go to support center, look at the training videos, learn how to use uh, different uh, features available within novel, including searching for property data, how to use interactive equations, and so on. <clears throat> so then here is a screenshot from this Power Electronics uh, handbook book. And this, you will actually see the table of contents. Uh, the author's affiliations, and you can see that it is a, um, a well-reputed author coming from University of Illinois. Uh, so these are the kind of sources which are reliable, authentic, that we want you to use in your projects as well. And we'll strongly encourage you to not, I think I will, uh, require you to cite these reference sources if you're using it in your project. Uh, the more uh, uh, we need to know how you find that information and anybody who is working on your project also need to know in a team of where you found that information from. Um, so, um, and in the novel, you can actually find a link where it says cite this source and it will also give you a citation there. So uh, definition of power electronics and a uh, lot of the things that you can explore within this book chapter using trends in power supplies and so on. Uh, 
Uh, the next example uh, we want to see is how to search for property data, right? Uh, property data is very important, very critical, especially in engineering projects. You want to use a particular material which is cost effective at the same time increases safety um, of your product. So regulations uh, and so on. So how do we uh, find, for example, I'm learning for, or looking for property for shear modulus of glass ceramics. How do I do that? Um, uh, then uh, from the property search thing here, from main novel page, you can select open material property search. You can click on that link and that will take you to the material property search page. And because I want glass ceramics, I can type the term here. Uh, and I also, I know that it is within mechanical properties or you can simply type that property and it will take you to that. So uh, under mechanical properties, you can see that there are several other properties you can find, including Young's modulus and shear modulus and so on. But because I want shear modulus, I can simply um, uh, hold this and drag this property within the search box. You can drag and drop up to three properties here. So what this means, once I click on search, I will find those sources with, uh, with glass ceramic, uh, uh, with uh, shear modulus in their uh, property data. Uh, so when I click on that, one of the source that I found here is from ceramics materials properties, uh, table one. Um, and you will see that there is a shear modulus that shows up and there are other different properties that you are also showing up here, including uh, coefficient of thermal expansion, Poisson's ratios, modulus of rupture, modulus of elasticity and hardness and so on. And notice that on the top you will see uh, export option. Uh, uh, so when you click on that, you will be able to export the table with citation into your uh, spreadsheet. Uh, and uh, there is a link to citation here. So when you click on that, it will tell you the complete citation for this source where it is coming from and which ebook uh, or a reference book uh, from novel has this information. <clears throat> okay, so uh, at this point, I'm going to stop sharing and have Kit talk about some additional details about novel. Hey, appreciate that, Jay. Um, so hopefully everybody enjoyed that um, explanation of where to access um, your different uh, databases that you have access to at Drexel. Uh, so Jay, Jay was talking a little earlier about some of his guides, and, and this is just a quick example of one uh, designed for electrical and computer engineering. Um, so you'll see a couple, of, a couple of things over here to the left, finding articles, electronic books, so if you clicked electronic books, for instance, um, you'll see some of the resources that Jay has mentioned throughout his presentation thus far, um, novel academic collection, Safari, um, eBrary. Uh, so you, you have a lot of access to rich resources to help you um, both as researchers and then as well as faculty members, if uh, we have any faculty members on the call today. Uh, what I quickly wanted to go over in novel, um, Jay kind of demonstrated via slide or some of the slides, but let's just take a, a topic um, that's pretty popular in engineering right now. Uh, we'll go with additive manufacturing. I'm, I'm thinking one thing and my brain's typing another. So when you type in additive manufacturing, like Jay was saying, you're gonna get a ton of reference material. It's really gonna be dependent on what your research is, is involved in. And as well, if you're an undergrad, a graduate, a faculty member, um, there's a lot of different things in Novel um, that can help aid you to get up to speed on additive manufacturing in this case, or if you wanted to pull together teaching materials uh, for a class that you're trying to put together, or you need to share research across a team. I'm just gonna take the, the first result here. And, and like Jay said, if you're looking for a really specific topic, Novel will try and recommend things um, that may or may not fit the, the bill. But you could say, I'm looking for additive manufacturing um, further related to fiber 
placement or uh, thrust chamber. So if you want to drill down further into a topic, um, you can certainly filter over here by the concept. But in this case, we'll just take a book um, and we'll say, maybe I'm an undergrad. I need to understand more about uh, a, partic a particular subtopic of additive manufacturing. So design issues in additive manufacturing. You can actually take this um, and save it to my novel. Um, it would require you to make um, or create a profile. Um, there, all, there are also options. Like if you don't want to create a profile, you can save this um, to a folder and you could just share it out uh, via randomly. But we will say, let's save this to my novel. Uh, you can add it to a particular folder. So you can create that folder name on the fly here. You could say, all right, I want this to go in my mechanical engineering course, or if I'm taking a, a specific course as an undergrad, I want this for reference material for my senior design project. Simply add this resource here, and then it's going to save to my novel, uh, which you can navigate back to over here on the left-hand pane. So pretty much all the navigation is going to be over here on the left that you can get back to at any time. So if you wanted to get back to the material property search that Jay shared, you could click property search and it would take you um, to that, that work area. If you want to go back to my novel to see where we've now saved this resource, just click up here at the top. And you're going to see all the folders that you've saved. Um, and you can save tables, you can save uh, full text reference, uh, you can save equations. Um, so you're going to see a couple of folders I've um, set up here. This one's unfiled right now, but you can see I have the Reynolds equation in here. Um, I've got a quick reference on fluid mechanics and machinery. And again, you can get as detailed as you want. You can save a book chapter to take you directly to it. So for, for this particular example, um, we saved that earlier chapter in uh, my mechanical engineering course folder, design engineers in additive manufacturing. And if you wanted to say, all right, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm working on a project and I, I need to share cross-disciplinary notes um, with, a, with a civil engineer and they need a little bit of understanding of my part, which involves additive manufacturing. You can add notes in as well. Um, these notes can be shared across a team or just for your own personal reference. So if you're studying for a test or if you're working on a paper like Jay said, you can make yourself notes, um, you could say important for um, my, for my uh, graduate thesis, for instance. You can pick the color you want, add note, and then it'll obviously save in that color. And you can go back to your folder now and you'll see it is, it's added a note to that particular chapter um, that we've that we've set up here. So you can see the little notes added. And again, if you wanted to share this folder across a team, you could just simply add the email um, of your uh, project members. You could say like J at Drexel edu. Just, just as an example, send an email uh, and say important for um, senior design uh, mechanical engineering course. So that does it for this part. Um, again, you can, you can do this on really anything. If we wanted to go back to our search for additive manufacturing, let me get you back to the home page here. Looks like there's some. And just to add to what Jay had said earlier, so additive manufacturing. So type additive manufacturing. Oh, sorry, I actually accidentally clicked on the actual resource. You can see up here at the top, you can also filter down um, into tables. 
So you can look at the mechanical properties of additive manufacturing nickel-based superalloy. Um, so hopefully that is um, helpful. I'll go ahead and stop my share and pass it back off to Jay. Uh, but that's just a little bit of the collaboration tools uh, that are available on the platform. Uh, and you can also grab links uh, from the, the resources. So if you wanted to take um, a, a link and put it in your LMS system, uh, if you're a professor, um, you can copy the clipboard and then link this resource back um, for supplemental reading uh, for a particular course you may be teaching as well um, at, in additive manufacturing as an example. But Jay, all right, I'll go ahead and stop share. Uh, Jay, I think you're on mute. Uh, so one option I also saw was that uh, you can also save it on your mobile. So you can be able to use your mobile phone to search as well? Yeah, so there is a mobile app set up for Novel. So if, if you are one who likes to read on your iPad, um, you can build yourself a library um, of different resources. So you can have like Novel to go, and you can see in some of these screenshots, like fifth aircraft structural design, uh, you can check out as many resources as you want. There's no limit. Uh, so if you're working on a field project um, and you downloaded uh, a full text reference for um, like one of these resources, uh, you'd have it readily available to kind of scroll through on your iPad or phone. That's great, Keith. That's fantastic. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so now I will have to go back to my presentation. Okay, so, so far we looked at uh, finding background information, searching for property data. Uh, so we were trying to understand the concept so that we can do uh, peer-reviewed scholarly literature from scholarly journal articles. So how do we do that? So uh, during the design project, we developed enough background now that we are ready to go and explore scientific literature as published in journal and conference papers. Uh, and that can be done uh, using Engineering Village uh, databases. And then uh, uh, again, you click on uh, the library guide and under electronic database section, you will see link to Engineering Village and you can start searching for a research article, latest paper on the topic, uh, and in a way you are actually doing an engineering literature review for the topic. And then we'll also talk about controlled vocabulary in this because it's a very powerful tool to refine your searches so that you are uh, finding the most relevant papers. So when you click on engineering village, it takes you to this page here and uh, you can see that you can be able to uh, uh, see the search history, but you, the search history is only available you, if you can create an account, uh, right? Because it's your own search. So, so when you create a novel account, the same account, your email address and username, whatever password you use, you can use it for Engineering Village because they both are elsewhere products in a way. And there is, and once you uh, have your account set up, uh, you have saved your searches, you can also create uh, some alerts. I think there are more details will come out uh, as we go through this presentation later. And suppose I'm all interested in finding information on how drones are used in bridge inspection. I know we have uh, some faculty members and researchers and students interested in these kind of projects. In uh, So I use that as an example and uh, 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 using uh, synonyms, similar, so I'm using either drones or unmanned aerial vehicles and bridge inspection is my keyword. And I want to sort by the latest. So when I use this, the most latest article will come on the top. And you will also see that there's an add search field here. So you can uh, uh, select additional uh, fields and continue to build on your searches here. So when I do that, uh, here are some examples of search results that I found. There are 108 records when I did the search last, um, and my search terms will appear here, drones, unmanned aerial vehicles, and bridge inspection. Um, 
uh, and you can uh, see actually that you can also limit by physical properties and here are two examples I'm using here uh, you can see get it option uh, and you can also look for the full text uh, there's a title uh, authors uh, uh, is actually this is from IEEE Journal of uh, Automation uh, it was published in July 2020 so it takes you to an IEEE paper while searching in engineering village so what what is uh, the, uh, the thing that you're learning from here that engineering village indexes articles conference papers from thousands of other journals and conferences and you can discover through uh, this uh, platform here um, uh, so uh, I can also limit by physical property and suppose I'm selecting one of these citation here uh, but before I do that I also wanted to introduce you to controlled vocabulary uh, because what happens is that when you search for the first time you may pull up hundreds of papers and you want more than 11 papers so how do you refine your topic uh, and you can do that by using controlled vocabulary so on the left uh, side of your search results uh, you will see the, uh, the f I had displayed two articles but if I scroll further down you will see uh, that they, you can also limit by open access papers by journal articles uh, it has uh, X uh, provides compend X and inspect so engineering village also has other database called inspect and they both are uh, complementary of course some of them could be duplicate uh, but not everything is there's a lot of it is unique uh, but there's it uh, you can also do that by remove duplicates so inspect uh, and complex are two major databases uh, that are indexed within engineering village in addition to some others but then you will see controlled vocabulary here and if I click on view modeling here uh, I'm pulling up all additional terms uh, uh, within that search so this search that I executed has articles comprising of these subject areas by this subject term so then I can select uh, inspection or unmanned air vehicles or cameras or damage detection uh, collision avoidance and remote sensing and robots some additional co uh, keywords uh, that helps me to refine my searches and then you click on limit to after you select those terms and now uh, we have those terms integrated uh, so I'm finding more than 11 papers and uh, suppose I'm using this example concrete defects inspection and 3d mapping using CD flyer quadrator robot uh, and this is from the source IEEE slash CAA journal of automation published in July 2020 uh, click on detail to get more uh, detailed information about that abstract and summary um, and uh, you can see the complete citation information uh, plus the abstract when you scroll down under detail and get it to get to the full text uh, from Drexel libraries we may, you may have a subscription to it and if we have subscription to this paper uh, you will be able to get the full paper so um, here is the um, publisher of that article uh, Institute of Electrical Electronics Engineers IEEE uh, the abstract um, and notice that there are a lot of control terms uh, are also available and these are going to help you to build uh, search strategy and one of the key things that you need to understand is you have to have collections of good relevant keywords uh, so that you can find most relevant papers uh, and you can use this here uh, so then I clicked on that and take me to write to this full paper uh, from IEEE Explore we have subscription to IEEE Explore as well so when you click on PDF PDF you will see the full paper um, if I click on get it option um, I want to illustrate an example uh, that sometimes you come across an article that we may not have subscription to it uh, so what do we do uh, like for example uh, this is an article from Japanese railway engineering published in January 2020 newly developed bridge inspection technology using laser measurements and drawn measurements and I'm interested in paper but I can't access it uh, so what do I do 
uh, what happens? How do I know that we do not have access? Uh, click on get it. When you do that, you will see that your uh, access to the libraries does not have online access to this item. And it tells you that for well, this item to enter library loan. And then when you do that, uh, it takes you, uh, when you, once you log on using your uh, Drexel 1 uh, credentials, you will see um, that all these fields are auto automatically filled up when you submit a request. So Japanese railway engineering, general title, article title, the author, all these are automatically filled up. Uh, make sure that all the fields are complete um, before you submit the request. When you scroll down, uh, you will see a link to submit request. Uh, submit request to get full paper by email later. And uh, borrow from other libraries page. These are some additional examples. And sometimes you want to request a book or something that we don't have. Uh, you go to borrow from other libraries page and uh, select uh, Iliad overview of services and so on. Uh, easy borrow for books, Iliad for general articles and books and so on. Uh, I'm not going to go into details of it. I'm going to stop sharing here. And Kate is going to go more in depth into Engineering Village. Keith, please unmute. I hate when I do that. Anyway, um, sorry about that. I was saying uh, to be able to find these resources uh, quick um, based on your discipline. Um, again, you can find them on Jay's uh, different research guides for electrical engineers, mechanical engineers. Uh, he pretty much covers the entire uh, disciplinary gamut. Uh, for engineers. So we'll go over to Engineering Village. Uh, I'm going to sh quickly show you how to set up an alert and how to kind of integrate Engineering Village with some of the other tools that you may use, uh, whether it's Zotero or Mendeley. Um, I'll show you how to export uh, some of the results that you find in Engineering Village um, to a service like that. So we'll do a super popular topic right now artificial intelligence and deep learning, doing it again. So like Jay was saying, um, there's a couple of different databases that you can search on Engineering Village. Uh, those are gonna be Compendex and NSPEC. Um, again, they both cover um, specific uh, disciplines, uh, whether it's computer science, um, all the different disciplines within engineering, mechanical, electrical, chemical. Uh, so we'll go ahead and execute this search. So what Engineering Village allows you as a researcher to do is to search for uh, journal articles, conference, conference proceedings, standards, um, really uh, any literature that you would be looking for um, to obviously like find trends in, uh, find references uh, for your own general research um, when you're writing your own papers. Uh, you'll see up here at the top, uh, the, the database as a whole will try and recommend um, further terms so you can refine your search. And then these are coming down, or these are coming from the controlled vocabulary box here. So if you, fa if, if you found a particular search that you're executing to be um, super helpful, uh, you can further define your search down here. So if you wanted to say, I only want research related to artificial intelligence and deep learning from the last five years, uh, you could tell the tool here um, via the facets uh, to limit to. And then you're going to see your search actually like refined up here. So we've searched for artificial intelligence and deep learning within the last five years. So you can save that search. Uh, again, you can put it in a folder or make a particular name. So you could say research related to computer or just say AI and deep learning. So you can save your search there. You can also set up an alert. So what an alert is going to allow you to do is be able to, so when we index new uh, 
journal articles, conference proceedings, um, really everything that is pulled up into Engineering Village, either in InSpec or Compendex. Uh, you can have the database actually send you an email. Um, so when a new like journal article related to this search um, is pulled in, it will just send you a weekly email to say, hey, Jay, or hey, Keith, um, here's your list of reading for the week. Um, if you wanted to look at uh, particular journal articles related to um, this particular subject. So you could say limit to recent publications. And then uh, if you're on a team and it's important for your teammates uh, to be able to see papers uh, related to the search as well, um, that is, is something that you can um, send. So I could say I want to send it to myself and Jay. Drexel.edu, and you could say I want the citation or the abstract. Not sure why that is uh, blanked out at the moment, but you could just say create alert, and boom, it will send you, uh, like explained, a weekly notice about um, this particular search result. And again, if you're looking for the most popular journals for a field, um, this is that can be found as well. So you can look at the publishing trend. You can look at um, uh, the trend up of how many publications or journal articles are, are being published in a general year. So you can see a huge trend up just in the last five years uh, for research related to artificial intelligence and deep learning. 2017, we were at 81 or close to 8,200. And now it's absolutely exploded um, with 19 and obviously 2020 pulling back a little bit. But hopefully that um, is, is helpful, um, whether you're on a team or as just a general researcher uh, to your, uh, your existing workflow. And if you wanted to, you could select the first like 10 results and you can save these um, to your PC or um, to uh, one of the reference managers out there via like bib tags um, or um, in an EndNote type format. So Jay, I'll go ahead and hand it back off. I um, hope that was helpful. Oh, you're, you're doing the same thing I was doing earlier. You're on yeah. Okay, I'm just, uh, there's one slide left. Uh, so uh, both of some others, we talked about it uh, briefly. And uh, basically I wanted to highlight all the YouTube tutorials also available. So if you go to this last slide, uh, you will see a link for the helpful videos specific to Novel Engineering Village here. All the engineering, engineering Village resources are available here. Novel resources are available here. And our Drexel Libraries YouTube channel is also available here. So number of videos that our libraries have put together by our different subject experts are also available through this page. And uh, so I strongly encourage you to explore these video tutorials. And of course, I'm always there to help. Uh, so if you have any question about anything, please do not hesitate, just email me. Uh, and we'll get back to you. And we can also do a Zoom session if you like. So if you're working on a team project and if you need some more assistance, uh, we can uh, set up a time and we'll do a Zoom session. So I really appreciate all your coming. Uh, thank you so much. And let's have some question answers now.